Hi there. How are y'all doing? So my voice sounds a lot worse than it feels, okay? So um, just bear with me if you can tolerate the, the sound of my voice, we can get through this. Um, so I am the CEO of 3C Institute, and I'm going to talk in a, in a couple minutes about what that is and what we do. Um, but first, you know, the topic here is talking about 21st century learning skills and the role of gaming technology in advancing those skills. So let's first kind of review what do we mean by 21st century learning skills. Um, they are a set of skills that students are deemed to need in order to be successful in school as well as in the 21st century workplace. There are three basic categories of these skills. The first one are literacy skills. Now, th this is kind of what you would think. It's literacy in media. How do you use media? How do you understand media? How do you understand and use technology? How do you understand and use information? Right, so these are kind of classic 21st century skills. If you're gonna be in a high-tech kind of work environment, you need to have these basic literacy skills. But in addition to that, there are two other sets of skills. First one being what are called learning skills, which involve both creative and critical thinking. So being able to weigh options, um, look at the pros and cons of different options, critically think through a process and then make a choice. Be creative um, in your choice making and in the ideas that you generate. Then there's a whole nother set, actually, the majority of these would fall into something called life skills. Okay, so life skills include things like collaboration and cooperation and negotiation and communication, right? There's a lot of shuns. And so basically these are skills that in my area, because I'm a clinical psychologist, are in the area of communication and interpersonal skills. So one of the questions is, you know, in, in the area of STEM, and encouraging STEM education, 21st century learning skills are centrally important. Being able to know the facts, know the formulas, be able to implement those are no longer sufficient for being successful in STEM careers. We live in a multidisciplinary, team-based science um, and mathematics approach. My son is an engineer. This is his first year at Carnegie Mellon University. And you would not believe how many of his day-to-day -day activities involve working in teams, working in groups on projects. You have to be able to have these basic communication skills, cooperation skills, et cetera, if you're going to be successful. So I'm going to give you a little example here. Um, I don't think you'll be able to hear it. We'll see, though. Do you know if we have audio? <clears throat> so I'm going to show you a little clip. This is from, I don't know how many of you know about the FIRST Robotics. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful um, school-based program teaching kids to work together to build robotics and then compete. And so I was watching, I was traveling, but watching my son compete in this competition, and I kept hearing kind of the same words over and over again and kind of the same themes. And I want to I want to see if you guys can pick up on why I may be stressing this particular, oops, well, maybe not. How do you do this? I need to click. <laughs> oh, right here. Oh, you got a fancy version. Okay. All right. So let's see if this will work. No? Sorry. doesn't work. Have an idea about why it might not play? Technology. Technology literacy here. Watch it for a second. 
Thank you. That's it. Yeah. So um, anyone know what they may have been doing? So this is a competition of two robotics teams competing to get the most points. So if you could hear it, what it would be saying is that um, in order to get the most points per team, there's something called cooperation. And so that would be the two sides of the team agreeing to get two uh, yellow boxes and go to the middle and stack them on top of each other. And so my son was telling me how what he would do is go around to the other teams and convince them that cooper cooperation was a good thing to do. So there's all this behind the scenes negotiation about if you do this, I'll do this. And if they are able to cooperate with each other, they got the highest points. To me, I was just, I was thrilled with that because it's a perfect indication of, you know, in the STEM area, you do frequently need to know exactly how to negotiate those relationships and how to work together. Okay, have I convinced you? Social emotional learning is important for STEM. That's the number one message. Um, then why is this important to me? Why, uh, why am I up here talking about this? I am a clinical psychologist. I am not great at engineering or math, though my kids and my husband are. Um, but what I do care about is that kids who um, may be experiencing some interpersonal issues, may be experiencing things like bullying or being left out, I've spent my entire career developing programs that can effectively help those kids. And my company is called the 3C Institute, and our goal is to bring evidence-based practices out there into the real world and to do like what you're talking about today, which is scaling, making sure that these effective uh, programs and tools are scaled to, the, to be as large as possible. So then what we do at 3C is we take games and we use game-based environments to teach kids these very critical 21st century skills in the area of learning and life skills. So how can you use technology smartly and also in an engaging way so that you actually bring the learning to where the kids are? The kids, as you know, are using games, are engaging with games more and more. So how can we use games in a positive way where we actually are teaching these 21st century learning skills and we're simultaneously helping them be more successful at school because they need those skills in order to, co to collaborate and to work together academically. And so I'm not gonna go into the details a bit about these various games. I'd be more than happy to give, give you guys demos. Um, Zoo U is the, the game right now that is, um, it's been developed through Department of Education grants, has gone through randomized clinical trials, et cetera. It actually is the first and only evidence-based game for improving 21st century learning skills in that life skill area. So um, a little bit about why we chose to do games. Again, the number one reason is that it's an engaging way of teaching kids these 21st century skills. But then also in the school setting, which is where typically these skills are being taught or being focused on, um, it's very costly and takes a lot of time for teachers or schools to implement programs that are effective. So games are a way to very much scale and bring to all children the ability to learn and practice these skills in a safe environment. It also embeds uh, assessment. So one of the things is that you don't wanna just produce a game that is linear and static. It's very boring and you're not gonna get kids to play it. But more importantly, it's not gonna be very effective. So one of the things that our games do is they embed assessment. They're continually assessing how well the child is doing and it modulates things like the difficulty. So if a child is experiencing difficulty on a particular scene, they'll get more what we call pedagogical assistance. They'll get more help, more hints. The difficulty level will be lowered. Um, on the flip side, if a child is excelling at something, we'll make it more difficult. And so the advantage of the game is it's much like 
you know, if I were tutoring you one-on-one, -on -one, I'd be able to modulate my difficulty level, my pedagogical assistance. We can use games intelligently to do that too. Um, for a lot of different purposes, mine is just in the area of social emotional learning, but certainly in the areas of physics and, and math and social studies, there's wonderful game developers who are working to embed that kind of assessment and to increase those skills. And then the last thing I'll say is that it's personalized. And that means, again, that the learning experience, if you, took the, if you participated in the game, or you did, or you did, or you did, we would all have a different experience because the game responds to what you bring to it. Okay. And that's my last slide. Do I have time for one question? Sure.